Hello. So I'm in the great outdoors. It's a beautiful day, and I'm going to do a quick video on how to set up a, a very basic iOS app using a, an AWS backend. So what we're going to do is we're going to start within the AWS console, um, generate a sample project um, with some sort of out of the box connectivity to DynamoDB, to some uh, some backend functionality, and all these different features that Amazon provides you. And then we're going to generate a project, import it into Xcode, and then actually see it running in a sample app. So it's going to be a very short video. Uh, I'm going to build on it, so uh, I want to keep it very basic to start with. I just want to show you how to get started. Then from then on, I'm going to do further videos to actually explore what's in that sample project and how to tweak it to actually call your own services and stuff like that. Okay, so here we are in the, the good old um, Amazon AWS backend. By the way, excuse the background noise. I hope it's manageable. Um, uh, if it, in any case, I'll probably do the next one indoors. So the, here we are in the, the, the console. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Mobile Hub. So Mobile Hub is basically where um, all of the, um, the, the, the services are provided for, for you to, uh, to, to start these mobile apps. So we're going to click uh, Create New Project. And let's just give it a name like uh, iOS 101. And we'll do Create Project. Um, so these are all the out-of-the-box functionalities that AWS can bake into your to your sample project um, in advance, right? So, for example, if you want your your uh, your application to be able to connect to uh, the database backend, which is obviously going to be DynamoDB because it's AWS, then we'll click that one, and we're going to do enable NoSQL, right? So we're going to build build this into the app, and let's say okay, we're going to add a new table. And just for simplicity, we're going to start with an example schema so that it will give us some sample tables. Um, see my previous tutorial on, on how to actually get DynamoDB set up within AWS um, for, for more details there. But just for the interest of time, um, let's, do, uh, let's do news. Right? So it's going to s uh, create a sample table with attributes or columns, if you like, as suitable for news type content. Okay. Then uh, let's just make the, the, the permissions public. Again, we can go in more detail in later videos on how to actually, uh, what these actually mean and, and, and how to manage private and public tables. But I just want to do a very, very basic skeleton project here. So it's already generated a sample table for us with these actual um, attributes. So we can just literally, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to do create table and, and there we go. So I'm going to create table like this. So saving changes, and now we're going to go back to configure more features. So I'm just going to, so th as I mentioned, th these are all the other things you can do in your app. There's a dog barking there. Uh, so we can, for example, we can say, okay, let's do some cloud logic. So if you want the ability out of the box to be able to call services in the AWS backend using the AWS Lambda, which is the which is their service for invoking business logic in the cloud, then you click that and then enable logic. And this one is nothing really to configure, you just say save changes. Uh, then let's go back in a second to, is okay, it's still saving changes. Da, 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 da. Okay, now configure more features. And let's do uh, user data storage. So uh, AWS provides the S3 service for storing um, let's say files essentially in, in a storage system in the cloud, which is called S3. Um, so let's say we're going to store user data. Yes, we are. And configure more features. So this is back to the home screen. But let's say, OK, let's just keep it simple for now. Um, and, and just stick with these features. So th this is stuff like if you want push notifications for your app, uh, you would select this. If you want um, special sort of uh, functionality for users to sign in using Amazon Cognito, you click that one. Uh, so again, this is all for future videos, but um, for now, as I said, let's keep it simple. So up, to, up here, build your app. So click on this, and I'm gonna go for iOS Swift. That's the new sexy way to develop iOS apps. Um, by the way, if you don't know Swift, I really recommend going to Treehouse, um, Treehouse, TeamTreehouse.com, and following the the Swift tutorials there. They'll teach you from the ground up how to how to write iOS applications in Swift. So I'll link that down below. Um, right. So what we have to do is download the source package. So it's going to generate a source package for us in the background. So we're going to download that to the to our local file system. Right. 
Um, let's see how long this takes. Okay, so it's going to take a while. I'm actually running through my uh, phone as a hotspot, so it's taking a bit longer than usual. Uh, but with a bit of luck, it won't be long. So this is why it's really cool. It, it's done all the hard work for you. It's created a package, and you're just going to download this onto your local system. And then when this finished downloading, we're going to open Xcode. Okay, so um, that's, we can do it directly from the downloads tab, right? So if I go to uh, downloads, and I am going to select iOS 101, right? This tab here. If I browse inside here to the .xcode project file, okay, and if I open this, so this is going to open Xcode, and it's going to open that project. So if if you haven't used Xcode before, then I recommend, again, you go to the um, Treehouse online learning platform and follow their courses. So they'll teach you how to basically start from scratch. That's whether or not you want to use AWS or not, of course. Um, so Xcode is the, the, the ID that you're going to have to use, the tool, to create iPhone apps. Um, and normally what you do is you'd say, okay, I'm going to create a new project, um, and then you'd have a, a, a project structure, which is actually quite similar to, to this, right? But Amazon's already created it for you, and in, within here you've got all the plumbing required to actually connect to the AWS backend, which is really cool because now once you've got access to that code here, you can really very quickly sort of start browsing through and seeing how it works and you can start playing with things. So it's a great way to start with a template and then and then move on. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, let's build it for iPhone 6 Plus. And so if I if I just go to uh, the this button here, I'm going to basically, so this is building the project. So you can see up here it's building, compiling, 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 and okay, it's now running. And with a bit of luck, so I've clicked on the app, so this is the simulator screen. So you can actually upload this to an actual device uh, as soon as it's in Xcode. Um, but the Xcode provides you a simulator uh, where you can actually simulate exactly what would happen on any of these devices. I've chosen an iPhone 6. So if I uploaded this app as it is to my to my iPhone, this is exactly what it would look like. Um, but it's much easier to do it on the screen. So, for example, I just want to show you very quickly, um, and I'm going to keep it short, but each of these in this sample app is is designed to provide you a way to explore how to invoke these particular services in the back end, right? So in order to demonstrate the NoSQL back end, again, this is all within the app. So if you look in the code, you'll see you'll see all this all these message uh, text here and everything, and all the buttons and everything required to make this happen. Now if I click at the bottom, demo NoSQL database, right? Very straightforward. So I've got a news table here, right? So again, it's very simple what this app is doing. There's nothing fancy. It's basically saying, right, well, here's the table that you've created in the back end. So you can click on that table, and then you can, down at the bottom, you can do various things. Like you can say, okay, insert some sample data, right? So let's just go back to Amazon AWS for a second. And I'm going to go out of Mobile Hub, and I'm going to go into DynamoDB. So if you, again, I've mentioned this in the previous video, but DynamoDB, in your account in DynamoDB, you just have basically a list of tables, and it's very freeform, so you don't have to create a new database instance. When you, when I actually added this first, um, this actual uh, new app to to my project, sorry, to my account, what it did was it created a um, a new table, right? So, for example, here I can see. So it's the name of the name of the table prefixed by iOS Mobile Hub, right? So you can see there's nothing in there at the moment. Now, if I go back to my um, if I go back to my app screen, right? I'm going to click this insert sample data at the bottom, and it says 20 sample items were added to your table, right? So I'm going to dismiss that. Now, if I go back to my screen, and I refresh here
Now I can see 20 sample items have been added to that table. So I'm not going to explore it now, I'm going to do it in, in, in the next videos, but anybody who's a developer probably should be quite excited by that in the sense that what we've proven is that we have, a, we have all the plumbing between a sample mobile app and a real life Amazon backend right there in front of us. What we can then do um, is start exploring, right? So, um, and if we just go back, so all of the in Xcode, right, all of your project resources, everything required to make what we just saw happen is all within these code examples here, right? So you can straight away see, well, if I actually wanted to create an app that, you know, connected to a different table or did different things like instead of insert, maybe um, update or, or whatever the case may be, then it's simply a matter of augmenting what's in this table. So thanks for watching and I will definitely be doing more videos on this. Um, I'm actually in the process of building my own, my own apps and as I go along, I'll basically, uh, I'll keep posted on, on, uh, on, on, you know, on what I do. So if you have any requests or any comments or feedback about what you'd like to see in particular, let me know. Um, if you have any lessons learned that you'd like to share, also please leave a comment. And um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.